A very good morning and apologies. We are fashionably late this morning because, well, we had a little fire on the vehicle. Just a little one, nothing too serious, but it, but look, more smoke, says Viam. A very good morning to all of you. My name is Jamie. This morning, Viam is on camera with me. And as Tristan has told you, we are coming to you live from the Maasai Mara here in Kenya. Here's an animal that you won't see in South Africa. Oh, and he's posing so beautifully for us. Good morning, Mr. Elant. So never fear, although the flames did gently lap at the wires of our radio, we are on a different vehicle, so nothing too serious. There you go, an absolutely massive Elant bull to start off our morning safari. The largest antelope, and of course a member of the same tribe, essentially, as the kudu and the anyala that you'll see so regularly in the Sabi sand. Just look at the dewlap on that guy. He is massive. You see some elant bulls out here that are the size of buffalo easily, if not a little bit larger. They can reach up to around about 900 kilograms at their largest, which is just over 1,800 pounds. A really, truly enormous antelope. And the extraordinary thing about them is they don't look particularly agile, do they? But I've seen an elant jump from a standing start and easily clear six feet in the air. They are very powerful jumpers, despite their rather solid appearance. Good morning, mister. And look at that. A couple of weeks ago, a couple of days ago, this entire plane was just wildebeest. And now all we've got is some Dobby. Good morning, Toby. I've been looking for the Coke's Harter beers to show you because I saw a brand, brand new baby a couple of days ago on our way back from... Was it a rehearsal or a TV show? I honestly don't know. It blends into one, especially after being awake all night. But Viam and I saw a brand new baby Cokes. But they seem to have vanished. Now, our plan for the morning is we're going to go and find the wildebeest herd. We found them the other night, but unfortunately they were so far south towards Tanzania that it made signal impossible for us. But we're going to go and see whether or not any of them have wandered slightly closer to us. <laughs> ah, Nikki, very good morning to you. You'd like to know... Let me just take this out of low range. You'd like to know if we miss Rusty and Wendy. Definitely. Uh, not that we don't love... This is Pucker. This is actually Scott's vehicle. Miller's mine, in theory. Miller is the one that caught on fire, slightly. More of a melt and a bit of a smoke. And Keto is Brent's, because it's slightly larger and has the possibility of a winch in the front. We all decided as a group that Brent was the most likely to need a winch. Uh, yes, we miss Rusty and Wendy. I miss the, the quietness of their engines and their small size. I mean, you're just more maneuverable. We're much, much longer now. But having said that, Mila, the other night, and Kitu, served us very, very well in the mud. I mean, Viam and I were driving sideways for a large portion of Friday night, and there was mud all the way back up on our antenna at the back. So the fact that we didn't get stuck, I think, is testament to Look, we've had our struggles, but that's what builds the bonds with the vehicles. The number of hours spent fixing them, you become quite attached. And, as it happens, quite possessive. I'm not sure how Scott would feel. Scott is away for a few days. I'm not sure how he would feel about the fact that I'm driving his car. Possibly better than if Brent was, but don't tell him I said that. Well, nothing's ever close in this particular area. We've got the vast open spaces, and I've got a long way to go before I get to where I want to be. So let's go back across to Tristan and the Inkahuma Cubs.